we were supposed to start uh, half past, well, it's always the case. But anyway, whoever is coming, they will find us on the way. We'll have uh, a little bit of songs, maybe two songs, and then I'll pray, and then Pastor Isaiah is going to give us the way. Be tied, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day of the way. He care of you. God will take care of you. Through days of trouble and your heart that fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fears you, your path assail, God will take care of you, take care of you through every day, all the way. He will take care of you, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. Oh, God will take care of you. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. In 530, when Father, we thank you for you to give us this opportunity, Father, to come and worship you. Father, here's the time once again for the pastor to give us a message. Father, be with us, lead us, and Father, bless the proceedings. In Jesus' name I pray, Father. Amen. This evening I'm really happy to present the message that we have already planned by the title, a very good title that we have chosen, God-Centered Church. We are all members of the church, belonging to the remnant church, and then why we talk about God-Centered Church? Why should we ponder upon the church that we already belong to. And why are we studying about knowing to what church we belong to? And uh, we really need to understand that even though we belong to Christ, a Christ-centered church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church believes that we run a Christ-centered program, Christ-centered uh, activities, and Christ-centered church 
fellowship that we have. But we need to again know and our generation, our children need to know to which church we belong to. And uh, one should understand that this is not a church which evolved from a rainy season, from a warlike uh, end, and uh, it's a church people should not believe that it has just come out, popping out from the crowd. Today, a Christ-centered church is a church of God originated from Garden of Eden. The first fellowship, the first worship that you and I today make on Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, originated from Garden of Eden. And it is something that we need to think about that our generation should not forget to what church we belong to and to what kind of a fellowship we have today and how we moved about from the Edenic church till now and how this church could take us into the heaven. Today we find hundreds of churches, hundreds of organizations which comes out with their own doctrines from the one book that is the Bible. They have one book, they call it as the Bible, we also call it as the Bible, but hundreds of organizations, hundreds of churches bring out different doctrines from this one book. And there are hundreds of people who say, my church is the God's church. I belong to the God who created this heaven and earth. And so my church is a true church. And people say, ours is filled with all kinds of holy things and we follow the uh, holy sacraments that is found in the Bible from Genesis till Revelation, they say. How is it possible? Now if everybody says, we are from the Puritans, we are from the Genesis, we are from the Exodus, and we are from the seven churches that the Revelation is talking about. How one could come to a conclusion and to propagate to the people of the world and say that salvation could be taken from this part of God's church. Now we need to clarify, we need to ponder into the word of God because for all sorts of knowledge we have to take the Bible. We have to take the Bible. For all sorts of inspiration we need to look into the Bible. For all sorts of knowledge we need to care that this Bible can give us the maximum knowledge to know to which church I belong to. And which church is a Christ-centered church and which church is not a Christ-centered church. I will not say satanic church because we don't belong to the satanic church. There is a church called a Satan church. And to this extent of knowing how one can get into the Bible and know what the Lord has for us, what the Lord has for us and for our generation, that we don't miss the track or that we don't miss the people or mislead the people where our journey is into the heaven that God is wanting us to be there. Deciding how my journey is going to start in this world with the help of God, with the help of the church, with the help of the uh, knowledge that I can aspire from the word of God. And now, what the word of God says. What can we find from the word of God? So to begin with, I have taken 
a verse from the Bible, from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. As all of us know, what it deals with. You know, when Jesus was on this world, on this earth, one of his favorite disciples was Peter. One of his loving disciples was Peter. And uh, Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? What did Peter say? What did Peter say? Yes, my Lord. Why this doubt has come in you? And secondly also he asked, Peter, do you love me? How much do you love me? My Lord, I even can give my life for you. I love you so much. I love you so much. And the third time he asked, Peter, do you still love me? Yes, Lord, I will even die for you, he said. And Jesus was so kind enough to say these verses. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 says, And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This was said by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ called upon Peter. He asked Peter, Do you love me? Do you still love me? And the third time also he asked, Do you still love me? Yes, I love you so much. And the third time his answer was, I will even die for you. My dear brothers and sisters, this church the Christ-centered church should be built upon love. Christ-centered church should be built upon love for his brethren. Love for the humanity. Because when we find, we find Jesus Christ coming into this world, not for somebody else, not for the animals, not for the created beings, not for the creepers or the plants, or the animal kingdom. But he came for his created being. He had such an interest upon us. In Genesis we read. And God said. Let us make man in our own image. Brothers and sisters. I am so happy because. Jesus still didn't want to give up. Jesus still didn't want to give up. The people who rebelled against him and went away. They again and again. They did not want to stop. But still wanted to go against the will of God. They rebelled. They fought against. They stood against. And they wouldn't listen to Jesus. And the word of God. But still uh, when the right time came. Jesus had to. The God of Father had to send Jesus his son. To die for us. It was because of the love. Christ-centered church should have the love in us and that one should care for others. And so Jesus said, if you still love me, please care for my sheep. Be a shepherd. The shepherd, we all know. My Lord, the King David, what does he say? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not warn. He leadeth me. He guideth me. He restoreth my soul. He giveth everything. And he give, gives me all direction as to how I can lead the sheep that he has left uh, behind. The love Jesus had for the humanity. And a church should be built upon the love that Jesus had upon this world. We need to have a shepherd like the shepherd Jesus Christ who shepherded the people and guided, guarded, gave everything as what they needed to cherish the inheritance of this worldly life. One should understand that God is so kind and this church 
and this true church the church where christ is centered we find it in uh, you know first timothy chapter 3 verse 15 says the church should be placed upon the church is placed upon in a ground where the truth is the pillar where truth is the pillar first of all we need to understand that jesus christ said upon this rock this rock i will build my church upon the truth upon the word of god upon the promises of god upon the prophecies of god a church a christ centered church is built upon the rock that is jesus christ it may come flood may come and the water may rise rain may come water can rise but if a if a, a building is not constructed or built upon the lord jesus christ upon the rock that is jesus christ it may fall away it may break away it may be destroyed but on the contrary if a church is constructed if a life of a person is constructed constructed and if a person constructs his life on the rock that is jesus christ you know hailstorm may come thunders may come and whatever the rain which can wash away the whole world but god says that church will not that building will not fall away it will stand for ever and ever that's the church that we are talking about a church which will stand on all grounds of life on all difficult times it will prove that jesus christ is the center of the church when you want to talk about the real church the symbol of god's church as we find it in revelation chapter 12 the woman the woman who was seated upon the sun we need to understand the truth behind the whole thing it talks about the woman who was clothed with the sun the woman represents the church the sun represents the light of the old testament and the new testament and the uh, uh, forbearance of people who stand there who await there for the salvation of their life and it has tra- uh, transcended from the beginning until now it's talking about the purity of the church it's stop uh, it's talking about the beautiful nature of the church or the women and it's talking about the righteousness to which the church is clothed with and so a christ centered church should be a pure church built upon jesus christ a christ centered church should be a beautiful church which should be like a woman dressed and adorned of a son and clothed with the righteousness of jesus christ i think we find that jesus christ can be reflected from us and so many 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 thousands and thousands millions and millions of people can be gathered into that eternal kingdom why because the true church is with the truth the true church is with a, a pure and pure pure truth my church is planted on the purity my church is planted on the beauty of god's church my church is uh, clothed with the righteousness of god how often we need to understand that people should jealous should feel jealous about our holiness our righteousness our purity in our thinking in an, and in our action you know paul when he wanted to write to the second uh you know the corinthians in the book of uh in the epistle second corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 which says for i am jealous over you with godly jealous 
for i have exposed you to my to one husband and i may present you as a a chaste of virgin of christ a pure church identity of a pure church how to identify a pure church how to identify a christ centered church it says husband i mean uh, a church with one husband a woman with one husband one truth loyal to one person giving honor to one person worship to one person and all that we need is we need to have one husband and that is expose you to one husband and that you may be a pure and a virgin of christ, christ. whoever is warned with jesus christ they are a virgin to jesus christ so a church should be a, a virgin church a virgin which which is not destroyed which is not culminated my dear friends you and i belong to that virgin church we belong to that jesus christ who is the husband who is the bridegroom to the bride and we, and today the world is just waiting for the bridegroom to come what a glorious day it is going to be that the pure church a christ centered church is going to go with jesus christ because it has only one husband and that one husband is jesus christ and this uh, wife this woman that we call is a virgin church not mixed with different doctrines not mixed with the worldly doctrines not mixed with the uh, uh, teachings of the world not mixed with the teaching of satan and so we find it very clearly in the book of revelation chapter 12 we find that it teaches it's it is teaching that the woman that is a church is a pure church the sun and moon of the old testament church and the truth of the old testament church and the man child jesus christ the red dragon represents to satan so the war between satan and jesus christ is no more an end and that is why today we are urged and that is why we are forced to teach our people which is the church that is christ centered church which is the virgin church which is jesus christ church in some of the parts of the world we find satan church where they talk to the dead people you know spirit uh, spiritism spiritualism has gone up spiritism has come up all kinds of names are there the pentecostal church the roman catholic church the protestant church and to which church do we belong to i can tell you we belong to the church of jesus christ we may have a name we may have a name and how to identify this name from the bible am i a roman catholic church am i a protestant church am i a pentecostal church to what church i belong to the bible has an answer the bible has an answer the struggle between jesus and satan still is going on and so if i have to talk about the dragon the dragon which is found in revelation chapter 12 verse uh, 17 it comes to attack a particular group of people satan attacks the virgin church satan attacks god's church satan attacks a christ centered church and so we need to be very very careful that even he took the church the woman into the wilderness the dragon took the woman into the wilderness and the church was in darkness we call the dark ages the dark ages what happened to the church of god 
What happened to the pure church? What happened to the virgin church? What happened to the Christ-centered church during the dark ages? Satan played all his ways to close down the avenues of worshipping the true God. Of following the virgin church, he stopped all the avenues. They were sent. I think from AD 538 to AD 1798. The church of God the whole world we say, the dark ages. Satan still says that the churches were closed, that the truths were closed, that the virgin church is finished. But still, the people who lived in the caves, in the wilderness, under the trees, into the mountains, hiding themselves and worshipping the true God on the true Sabbath worship, and showing that still God is a ruler and still God is in control over his true church, the virgin church. And so we cannot forget that the virgin, uh, virgin church of God starts wherever it is. It cannot be stopped, it cannot be destroyed, it cannot be closed. Sometimes when we have traffics around, we get some announcement that this road is closed. <coughs> And if they leave it just like that, we try to take the deviation or diversion in our own belief as to how we can reach the destination. What is our destination? What is our way? Where is our way? We need to understand that there is a destination to every one of us who are seated here. To every church, every men and women in the world. There is a destination and that is God's kingdom. Until the church of God reaches the kingdom, there are going to be hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of avenues that the uh, uh, church of God can take, it, take the people into heaven. In India, when we talk about uh, Christianity to people, they say, you worship Jesus, we worship Krishna. Okay, you uh, study Bible, we study Bhagavad Gita. You, you know, your Bible teaches about disciplining people and our Bhagavad Gita teaches about disciplining. And uh, uh, they say the additional, we say about Ellen G. White and they talk about, you know, uh, a, a great writer, the poets, and they say Tirukural, there is a, a poet who goes good with the Bible. Like the parables, like uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the Mount of Blessing, the, you know, thoughts from the Mount Blessing. Every, all, uh, you know, the New Testament kind of thing goes. But the resultant is what? They say, you travel to heaven in a different road, and we travel to heaven in a different road, they say. Is that right? Are they right? Is their route right? Is their way right? My dear brothers and sisters, it is Jesus Christ-centered church. It is Jesus Christ-centered way of life. The avenue of reaching that kingdom of heaven is through Jesus Christ and not through men and not through the teaching of men and not through the teaching of the world. The world can present any truth, every truth that might be possible of changing ourselves and even the elect people will be cheated sometimes. The scriptures, very carefully, the chronology of the Bible should be seen carefully. The study of the chronology of the prophecies should be studied carefully. And the chronology of the writing of the books should be studied also carefully. Where we need to pick a, make a full stop, where we, make, uh, we need to make a comma and where we need to proceed in our life. Very, very importantly, we need to understand that the remnant church should be expounded, should be explored. What is the remnant church? The call from the dark ages. They thought that the Christianity is over. The churches in the 
New Testament or in the Old Testament has come to an end. That is the virgin church I'm talking about. Not the Catholic church. Not the Roman uh, church. Roman church. But I'm talking about the virgin church. People, everybody believe that the Sabbath keepers are no more. The commandment keepers are no more. The Christ-centered worshippers are no more, they said. The chronology followers from the Genesis till they are no more, they are destroyed, they said. And we all know, when they started to burn the Bible, okay, during the Reformation time, when they started to burn the Bible, we understand if they had uh, burned a few, hundreds have evolved, hundreds have been printed, printing machines were uh, you know, invented, and today we find everywhere, every store, every street, every country, every nation, every language, the one on one uh, Bible, I mean, a book which is translated into hundreds of languages is this Bible. And this Bible is read by everybody. And this readers of the Bible are the virgin church that should follow. And that is followed. A church cannot be destroyed. A Christ centered church cannot be buried. It has to be resurrected. Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. The church elders, they went to the Romans soldiers and said, now there is a talk among the disciples that uh, this Jesus will rise again on the third day and sometimes these uh, disciples will steal the body of Jesus and go away and say, that Jesus is already risen. So kindly please see that this what grave is shut. This grave is sealed. And this seal is closed. They said seal it. They said close it. They said be careful. And finally the Roman soldiers they brought what? A centurion of what soldiers? Appointed a centurion. And said take care of that. Be very careful, watchful, don't sleep, be careful, because there is a saying that Jesus will rise on the third day. And there is also a belief that the disciples will take the body and go and prove that Jesus is risen. The tomb was closed and sealed. But my brothers and sisters, on the third day, early in the morning, the cave, the, you know, the tomb was broken out. That which was sealed was taken away. Rolled away. And there comes our Jesus. Alive. And today, that Jesus is alive. And this church belongs to that Jesus. A risen Jesus Christ. People should follow which church to believe. Which church to attend? Which church will take us to heaven? And my dear brothers and sisters, it is very, 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 very interesting to know that Bible doesn't fail. It's written by the holy men of God. Holy men of God moved with the spirit of God and they wrote it. And today, though it is printed in hundreds of languages, hundreds of designs, Hundreds of exposures, but still they are unable to find the virgin church, the Christ centered church. People who worship on Sunday, do they say Satan's name? Whose name do they say? Jesus Christ. They say Mother of Jesus, the Apostle's name. By Apostle's name, they have churches. St. John's Church. St. Andrew's Church, St. James Church, and everybody has a church, but Jesus Christ didn't have a church, and that Jesus Christ had a church, and that was the commandment keepers, the Sabbath keepers, the remnant people, those people who still had sufferings and a lot of difficulties in life, but still they persisted. Wrong. I will build my church, and this is the church that the Lord wants to say, the remnant church, the true church, the virgin church with one husband to go.
surprisingly, God's church should be revealed at any part of the age. And we learn about the seven churches, am I right? In Revelation chapter uh, 2 and 3, God very clearly gives a symbolic representation of seven periods, seven areas, seven uh, deposition of uh, learning, and seven uh, churches by names. We say all these churches, God says, now tell one angel to write a letter to all the churches in Asia, he says. So all those churches in Asia, they had seven churches representing seven periods, representing seven ages, representing seven people, culture and everything. I want to tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, in all the seven churches recommendation is, in all the study of the seven churches we find, first, there is a commendation of the church. God commends their work. You're good. You're nice. You're, uh, you know, your character is good. You've done this. You've done this. All those things are good. But this I don't like from you. And this I have found it wrong in you. And this you have to correct yourself. And this you have to forget it. And this you have to leave it. So there is a commendation, a commending on all what is good. And there is a recommendation to what to do, to what to come out of, and to what to follow. And that is what we believe. And to which church you and I believe, belong to. To which church do you and I belong to? The last church. The Levitician, the Levitician church. We need to understand what is that Levitician church. It won't be hot nor cold. I know of your good works. We do a lot of good things. And to which period we belong to is the last day period. We belong to the seventh church. The last church. And that church recommendation is that we need to be cold or hot. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to ask you one question. Are you hot or cold? Are we hot or cold? If you are cold, then you are what? Not bothering about what? What is happening around us? And if you are hot, that means you are hot enough to take the challenges, to move on, to make a revivalism, to revive against our uh, uh, satanic thing and to move forward, still we are alive. We put everything in cold storage for what? To make it stable. But we burn it for what? To flame, to uh, bring out flames. We need to understand that we need to be hot. We need to be that, you know, sometimes why we put the gold and uh, burn it? To purify. This is a purified church. The last church should be a purified church. And we all know that Jesus, when he talks about the church that you and I think about, John chapter 10, verse 16, which he says, we need to be shepherds, caring for the sheep. The last church needs to have a shepherd-like of a character. Where the sheep can go anywhere. You know, God said, Jesus said a lot of, you know, uh, parables. He said about the last sheep, the last coin, the last son. And at the end of all these lost, 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 what happened? There was somebody who found it also. There were times when Satan came inside and troubled and did everything. Sometimes it would have been seen that this is going in a wrong direction. But you should know that the guidance, the, uh, the Lord of heaven is watching and he is very much keen on the virgin church and it is going surely on the right track. Not on. Revelation 18. So much important. The church of Christ. Revelation 18 talks about what? 
Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Why? Because it made others to drink of our wrath of a fornication. It gave all the wrong doctrines. The Catholicism gave all the wrong doctrines. It gave all the you know, inferior you know, qualities of learning. They took away the right to read the Bible. They took away the right to be a leader in the church. They said the Pope is all in all. And nobody can be in between. And the Bible reading was taken away, destroyed. It was away from people. With all wrong doctrines. With all filthy things. With all unrighteous things. Everything crept into the church of God. Into the church of God. But there was one church which followed. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. They kept their ears open. And there is an angel telling us, Babylon is fallen and fallen because it is drunk of satanic thoughts. So they said, there is a teaching of Satan here. And so we need to get out of this church. We need to come out. And we need to follow what the Lord says. And the Lord says in Revelation chapter 14, 6 to 14, what does he say? And there followed another angel in the midst of heaven. Telling the people to worship the creator of the universe. Telling the people to worship the creator, the creation week as a Sabbath. Telling the people to worship on the day that God has prescribed in the Bible from the Genesis till now. What a doctrine. A warning announcement to the world church. To everybody in the world. If they are a Hindu, if he is a Muslim, if he is a Christian of non-denomination of the Seventh-day Sabbath keepers, to everybody, to everybody God is saying, and God is telling, where you belong is what? Where you belong is what? Hell. You are going to die. It is Satan's church. And so that is one that is awaited to everyone who worships today also. That's the seventh day Sabbath. It's not the first day Sabbath. It's not the eighth day Sabbath. And it is only the seventh day Sabbath. That was followed in Genesis in the Garden of Eden. Followed by Abraham. Followed by you know, the children of Israel, even in the wilderness, as we find the church came out of the dark ages for 40 years, the children of Israel, they did worship the Lord in the wilderness on the Sabbath day. Addressing the children of Israel, God says, you are my people. I want to establish you because you, you need to know that I am your God and you are my children. For this cause, Jesus has died on the cross well, that he is the father of all creation like the 1844 even during Jesus time the Jewish people the children of Israel awaited for the Messiah the savior of the world that they would save them from Romans and likely when the Adventist church 1844 when they left everything they said Jesus is going to come soon and that is where some of their faith was tested few remain few remain loyal to God they showed their allegiance to God they showed the services of their life to God and with few people the origin of the virgin church started again. Again it started. Satan thought that was the end. 1844, October 22 was the end of the Seventh-day Adventist church, he thought. He thought that was the end of the Adventism who believe on the second coming of Jesus. A Christ-centered church talks about the second coming of Jesus, follows the Seventh-day Sabbath, follows the policies of the uh, prophetical learnings of the Bible. And we are on the last roll to be in the first call 
on the last roll on the first call to enter into the kingdom if you and i are the are in the true church are in the virgin church are in a church where it believes the teachings of jesus christ and finally this is a church which preaches about the keeping of the 10 commandments the teachings about the prophecy the end time prophecy this is a church which gives the last warning to the world today we find that you and i are so blessed that we are in that virgin church that we are in that last church and that jesus christ himself calls that's the remnant church remnant church what is the quality they keep the commandments of god they have the testimony of jesus they follow jesus wherever he goes and that is the rule that is a yard scale that they have to follow and a christ centered church is a church that is testify both in the old testament and in the new testament carries us through carries us through we need to love the church my dear brothers if you still believe that you belong to that holy church if you still believe that you are a part of the holy church we need to understand that this church is something very special to this very very special not only to us to this world because we carry what the three angels message we follow the seventh day sabbath keeping we follow the 10 commandments of god we follow the health principles of god's bible and we show our allegiance to god in serving this community and my dear friends it is my earnest call today that there are hundreds and thousands and millions and millions of people who are still in the okay mess or the ocean trying to okay. swim out but not able to swim out listen, listen. we need to understand that you and i be the two to bring those who are still struggling to know the truth to come out of darkness to come out of the wrong teaching to come out of the un unworthy of you know loyalty to god and that's the day i think the god is going to the lord is going to come and we are going to reign with him for a thousand years coming down down with the new jerusalem go to enjoy the fellowship the goodness of god the goodness of being with god is going to be granted to each one of us let us not stop within yourself go preach this church is called to preach this church is called to preach the third angel's message the church is called to preach the seventh day sabbath keeping to the world the church is specially called to keep the uh, temperance life the health the principles that one should know may the lord help us to identify many more that they can be added into this christ centered church that we will have what a prayer if we believe that you and i are going to be there in heaven making sure that you will also fetch as how god said i will make you fishers of men discipling we believe in discipling church god said go in and preach teach baptize them let every one of us teach preach baptize to gather the people into his kingdom in christ our gracious and loving heavenly father we want to thank you lord for this blessed opportunity that you have given to us once again to think about the virgin church the christ centered church with oneness of belief that is the bible following bible the principles of bible jesus christ who gave his command go into the world preach teach baptize them discipling them that you will make members to enter into his kingdom bless us to this end we ask it in jesus name amen ah uh.
uh, we have come to the end of our service. But before we end, we are going to sing number 296. Brother um, Elder Chris, can you come forward so that we sing number 296 as we close our session. Far away from God, now I'm coming home. The paths of sin long have trod. Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home. Never more to. Love, Lord, I'm coming.